Keep it low, Mikey. Keep it low. Don't let them under you. Make that back straight away wide, buddy. Get all over the place. Don't let them run up on you. Come on, man. Come on now. Watch it, mirror. Watch it. He's gonna make a run inside. Block him. Block him. That a boy. Three wide behind them. You got him, Mikey. You got him, man. You got him. Come on, man. Come on, baby. Come on. Get him in the fold. Get him in the three cars out. Oh, big trouble. Oh, big wreck behind them. Beat him back. Come on. To the flag. How about Dale? Is he okay? Although it was unclear at the time, depicted in this still, the greatest NASCAR tragedy had just occurred. At turn four on the final lap of the 2001 Daytona 500, Dale Earnhardt and Ken Schrader collided and crashed into the wall. Despite being in numerous terrible wrecks, Dale always seemed to escape fate. But why did he die from this one? It just didn't look that bad. Dale Earnhardt was born on April 29, 1951, with racing in his veins. His father, Ralph Earnhardt, was a decorated NASCAR driver who had just over 50 starts in the Winston Cup Series. However, despite being a great driver, he didn't wish for his son to pursue the same career. But as we know today, that didn't stop Dale from trying. Dale Earnhardt's first race was in 1975 at Charlotte Motor Speedway, and sprouting from this race would be a long stretch of NASCAR dominance. After bouncing around from team to team, Dale Earnhardt would end up racing for Richard Childress in the famous black number no. 3 car and earned the nickname, The Intimidator. His racing style certainly reflected this, as he would do anything he could to gain positions and win the race whether you liked it or not. This caused some drivers and a lot of fans to call him a dirty driver, but let me remind you that this style of driving made him one of, if not the greatest driver in NASCAR history. However, this prestige didn't come without any bumps in the road. Before we get to the tragic race of 2001, I first want to highlight a few of Dale Earnhardt's hardest crashes. Earlier in his career in 1982, Dale suffered a huge wreck at Pocono Speedway that broke his kneecap. Luckily, Tim Richmond helped the battered Dale Earnhardt to the ambulance. Do that in a hot car. Oh, oh we've got trouble in turn one. Look at that, two automobiles. That's Dale Earnhardt in the Wrangler jeans machine. During this crash, Dale nearly flipped over the wall, as this was when catch fences weren't mandatory at all tracks. Fast forwarding to 1996, Dale would suffer an even more devastating crash at Talladega, crashing hard into the wall and flipping onto his roof. Sterling Marlin outside. And Ernie going with uh, Earnhardt down on the inside. That's going to hit. Oh, it got trouble. Terrible crash. Earnhardt right in the field, all torn up. Earnhardt's number three, head on into the wall at 190 miles an hour. Dale Earnhardt would break his clavicle and his sternum in this crash, only to race two weeks later and place top 10 in the Watkins Glen road course. And the final crash I will highlight is the 1997 Daytona 500, where Dale would once again find himself on his roof. Position 7, back to about 19th and 20th, all really fiercely racing for a position. Unfortunately for them, they're about uh, two-thirds well, behind. Well, the back straightaway, Dale Earnhardt is into the wall. Looked as though he was tapped by Dale Jarrett coming off the corner, racing side by side. Earnhardt hit the outside wall hard and rolled down the back straightaway. However, instead of calling it quits, Dale limped the battered number no. 3 car back to the pits and started giving orders to get back out on the track. A true moment of this man's determination to finish a race. After winning the 1998 Daytona 500 after 20 years of trying, it seemed like Dale had completed every feat in NASCAR. He could have tried for another championship, becoming the best NASCAR driver the world had ever seen, but it was clear that the aging Earnhardt only had so many years of his career left. He had a family and a son, but soon he was able to do something that he was never able to do with his father. He was able to race alongside his son. If you've never heard about Dale Earnhardt, here's something you should know. He was cursed. Despite being one of the greatest drivers in NASCAR history, there was one race he couldn't conquer, the Daytona 500. In the shadow of his 1998 Daytona 500 win were 19 other starts he failed to win. But this race seemed perfect. A great team and a father and son racing alongside each other in the biggest race in NASCAR. It was clear towards the end of the race that Dale wasn't trying to win the race, but rather hold back the field and see his team prosper. It seemed like the perfect storybook ending. A perfect one, two, and number three. 
but we all know this wasn't the case. At the final turn at the 2001 Daytona 500, Dale Earnhardt collided with Ken Schrader and was killed instantly due to a Bazier skull fracture. He was able to survive these three arguably worse crashes, but not this one. It seemed like the past had caught up to him. Dale Earnhardt was inducted to the Motorsports Hall of Fame in 2002 and later inducted to the NASCAR Hall of Fame in 2010. And with that, this marks the end of the all-time greatest NASCAR driver in history. Dale Earnhardt's last moments were likely those of pride, seeing his son race off to the finish line along with his teammate Michael Waltrip. He was 49.